Hi everybody, Russ from the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well, my friends. Hope you're having a lovely, lovely weekend. Hopefully your Sunday's going well, although it's just been the morning, but hopefully you've got the bacon sandwiches on the go. Um, and, and getting the roast dinner ready. Oh, love a good roast. Um, as is customary over the last few weeks, we're bringing you another series in our... Uh, Another episode in our series, not, not a series, an episode, another se- episode in our series, Hammers in Hot Water, where we put together, uh, we go a rise smile in some of the more unusual players that have worn the claret and blue in the last few years, most notably the Red Nap era, to be perfectly honest. We've had the likes of Savio, we've had Dani, the original Portuguese superstar, we've had Marco Bugas, and now we've got another one of that Red Nap era, that's all mid 90s. Uh, crazy time uh, mid to late 90s period that was the red nap era very much like a a bit of a soap opera league of nations and so we're going to talk about a man um, who had a very unusual exit from west ham i'll just say that it's mr javier margas let's crack on and listen about the uh, the interesting career of mr margas we all remember the, the Gaza bleach blonde hair of 96 and Ben Foden's attempt to uh, create it for the Euros this year. But long before that, we had our own. Well, actually, no, just after that, 96, 98. But we just had our own uh, Quaffered international star. A man whose end of his West Ham career seemed like the things you'd see on a Netflix documentary. Step forward, Mr. Javier Margas. So let's take you back to just before he signed. It was France 98, and Margas was representing the Chilean national team at the tournament. This was the pinnacle of his international career, where he amassed 63 caps and scored six goals in the 10-year international career for Chile. He was the national team captain um, and a commanding centre-half. The the manager at West Ham manager at the time, Harry Redknapp, um, was at the World Cup scouting Javier. Um, He'd also seen him in a friendly um where he played against england at wembley where h said he was the best player on the pitch margas was extremely popular in chile partly due to uh his penchant of dyeing his hair in the color of the team he was playing for including when he turned up for the national team as well by the way the national team had made it to the knockout stages of france 98 which was a great achievement for them Javier had spent most of it, actually his entire career in South America, playing for Colo Colo, Club America, and Universidad Catalotica. Uh, Universidad Catolica. Catolica. Um, so it was a big move for him signing to West Ham for a million pounds in the summer of 98. Not just for him, but for his family. Um, and indeed, he signed the same day as Neil Ruddock. And go back and listen to Neil Ruddock's uh, My Hammers 11 where he talks about that, meeting Javier for the first time and Javier not realising that he was one of the players rather than a um, <laughs> a press guy or something like that, I think he said. So having come back off a strong World Cup, um, there was lots of excitement about Javier joining us, basically. He was an international star. He was also the first Chilean player to play for West Ham. So lots of intrigue surrounded him, particularly as this, you know, penchant for for dyeing his hair and stuff like that. He had an air of sort of intrigue around him. Um, He moved to England with his wife and very young family. None of them spoke any English at all. And so his kids were given special attention at school to integrate into English school life. Um, A friend of mine's mum, that was their job. That was her job. Um, So that's why I know it happened. Um, However, arguably the welfare of players back then, you know, some 20 odd years ago, wasn't as comprehensive as it is now, um, particularly for foreign players coming over to the country for the first time. Um, and that didn't really help Margas adjust to English life, basically. A clear example was the, the first day at training um, when basically Javier got lost on his way um, to the training ground. H recalled of this instance that we gave him a car and a house um, someone showed him the way to the training ground. Next day, he set off for training, and instead of coming to Chadwell Heath, he ended up at Stansted Airport, which is about 40 miles the wrong way. He then got a puncture in a country lane on the way back. I mean, what a nightmare. And indeed, literally, he turned left instead of right. He lived at Loughton at the time, so he'd gone the M11, uh, and he turned left instead of right. 
and uh, it just showed you things like that nowadays it's a lot it's a lot better in terms of the welfare of players and how they looked after particularly as i said foreign players coming over um he struggled he struggled to settle during his first season um and made only three appearances in total two defeats and a draw um during the close season it became apparent that he was really struggling with with homesickness um and his wife and kids actually just couldn't settle and move back to chile leaving him in england on his own he soldiered on uh, and would actually have his best season at the Hammers, helping the, the team lift the Intertoto Cup and uh, progressing into the earlier rounds of the UEFA Cup. He was playing well, but he was struggling with for per- his private life, missing his family and uh, continually suffering from homesickness. Um, at the beginning of the 2000-2001 20, uh, season, it became apparent this was becoming too much for Margas, and he just wanted to go home to be with his family. Although the nature of him leaving was very unusual, uh, as Red Nat recalls, someone said his wife had gone home and he was staying at a hotel, which was the, the Marriott in um, in Wolfham Abbey. Um, so he went around there to see him, and someone said they had a feeling he might be going home, and he said, "All right, he can't. Let, he's got a contract here. We've just bought him." So the, the hotel staff said to him, he was in said he, he was in the room and and, and because we couldn't uh, get to his he couldn't um, get the key to his so i asked him to ring no answer we were knocking on the door he went we went back to reception came back with a key he went into the room and he'd left the room he'd left his gear halfway there was no gear the window was open he'd basically jumped out the window of the marriott out of a first floor window and had escaped had escaped um west ham and gone back to chile and that was it that was the end of his not only his west ham career but his professional playing career he was still in the public eye in chile um most notably appearing in the chilean version of the island it was called uh expedition robin robins <laughs> i can't pronounce it. expedition robinson de la isle vrp um and where it was sort of a there was 12 um chilean celebrities i think he came fourth or he was a fourth one evicted maybe he was homesick again i don't know but um he also had many other many other ventures he was well known in chile uh for spending habits um think sort of a a a chilean version of mario balotelli in terms of the types of things he bought for example he bought two boeing 737s converted them into motels single person motels each with a jacuzzi um and and one valentine's day he had the idea to add erotic chairs into every room to help his guests um make their make their maneuvers more varied let's say that um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he was he's also a regular attendee at auctions um he famously bought an armored vehicle which belongs to general pinochet um he bought suitcases of cartier and rolex watches um for 34 million pesos uh, he purchased 20,000 pairs of jeans from a failing manufacturer so he's still well known in the um in the chilean press for these exploits and arguably without homesickness he may have eventually been mentioned in the sort of the same breath as people like thomas repko and sebastian schemmel he was a good player he played well when he was as i said he's his most successful time was a, was our, our most successful season but he couldn't get it was too much room to adjust in today's society it may have been different he may have been able to adjust and, integ- and integrate himself more quickly into the English uh, lifestyle for him and his family. But he just didn't. And unfortunately, because of that, he's another hammers in hot water. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And for me, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jab appointments. Come in your eyes. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.